Ah yes, the stack of blocks. A quintessential test of any physics engine. The idea is that all blocks will fall simultaneously, stack on top of each other, and stay stable. Let's see how that looks. Oh, what the hell, this guy? Oh, this guy oh, always oh. show. What? What is he doing here? God. All right. Here's what we're gonna do. You need to get out of this shot. Thank you very much. All right. We'll try another scenario. Ah, water wheel. Lovely. We've got a series of balls that will proceed down a chute. A lever will open, allowing them to cascade onto a pinwheel where they will fall and collect into a bucket. If everything goes well, this should be nice and stable. Let's uh, go ahead and take a look. All right, everything's like, oh, what the hell? I don't know this guy, he's always showing up. Uh, stay in the bucket. All right. Ugh, falling the wrong way, okay, here we go, here we go. And they're missing the bucket, okay. Well, clearly, this is not going the way it should have been. Alright, this guy wants to be in a video so bad, I'll make a special scenario for him. Oh wait, I think I hear him, I think I hear him. Shh, 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 shh. Oh. Ready, aim, fire! It's a miss, aim, fire! That's another miss, oh. so we'll just have to do this the old-fashioned way! Hi everyone, my name is JT, and all of the scenarios that you just saw were made inside of a physics engine that I'm building from scratch called Slingshot. Slingshot is written in C and C++, and it uses CMake as the build system. OpenGL 3.3 drives the renderer backend, and I'm using just a handful of free and open source software to drive portability across a couple different platforms. In this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about probably the most important parts of Slingshot. The ECS, the Constraint Pipeline, the Collision Pipeline, and the Editor. Well. Slingshot is an ECS-based physics engine, and what that means is that it uses an entity component system architecture as kind of an in-memory database to keep track of all of the state related to the engine. The goal of an ECS architecture is to increase speed by reducing memory latency for repeated operations on similar data types. The physics engine and the editor both run on a handmade ECS that I lovingly refer to as T-Rex. And honestly, using an ECS is probably one of the best decisions that I wish that I had made sooner. If you'd like to learn more about ECS, I'd check out Wikipedia or also Sonder Mertens has a phenomenal set of blog posts about his ECS called Flex. Slingshot uses constraint primitives to simulate joints. And since this is a physics engine video, I'm obligated to say that Slingshot uses constraints because you can't use springs for everything. But it turns out you can use them for cloth, uh, even though this is more like a, a crusty old rag that needs to be thrown in the laundry, honestly, but you know. Anyway, so you can't use springs for most things. So constraint primitives let you build up complicated joints using only two different one-dimensional constraint types, translational constraint and rotational constraint. An unconstrained rigid body can have any position or orientation in world space, like this red cube. But if I removed one translational degree of freedom, then I'd end up with this green cube, which can only move around on top of the grid. And then if I took away another translational degree of freedom, I'd end up with the blue cube, which can only move forward and backwards along a straight line. Removing all translational degrees of freedom leaves you with what's essentially a ball joint, which is just a rigid body that can have any orientation, but whose center of mass is fixed to one point in space. Taking this even further, you can combine rotational and translational constraints to get this orange cube, which can only slide around a line and can only rotate about its z-axis. And then you can combine these primitives to get something that's even more familiar, like this pink cube, which is actually connected to a revolute joint. But constraints can also exist between multiple rigid bodies. So take for instance this rope, which is made out of capsules combined end-to-end -end with ball joints. 
This scenario depicts multiple planks connected by revolute joints, which gives the effect of a suspension bridge. Or you could use a combination of joints between a bunch of different rigid bodies to get a ragdoll... One second. So, as I was saying before, you could even rig up a ragdoll using different combinations of constraints and rigid body shapes. The cool thing about using constraint primitives is that you can use either high-level joint descriptions or you can directly use primitive constraints themselves to build complicated scenarios. This cartoon engine model is made with just 100% primitive constraints. The engine applies little nudges to all constrained rigid bodies to make sure that their constraints are satisfied. These nudges are linear and angular impulses that have to be calculated every frame. These impulses come from solving the equation shown here for the vector lambda, given some matrix A and some vector B. And what's interesting about this equation is that all constraint-based physics engines have to deal with it in some way. And it's not a particularly easy problem to deal with. And the reason is because of these bounds on the vector lambda. These bounds are what's known in the physics engine community as a pain in the ass. They come from constraints with inequalities or constraints that require bounded impulses. If every constraint in the engine was an unbounded equality constraint, like any of the primitive constraints from earlier, then the bounds on lambda would disappear, and this whole thing would boil down to a nice general system of linear equations. And there are tons of ways to solve this. Gauss-Seidel is popular, but there's a billion other direct methods that could be used but including constraints like motors and collision and friction into the engine add a mixture of finite and infinite bounds on lambda, which transforms this whole thing into what's known as a mixed linear complementarity problem. And there are fewer ways of solving these kinds of problems, and unfortunately, solving the unconstrained equation and then clamping the answer just doesn't always work. But the good news is that there are algorithms out there for solving MLCPs. Slingshot uses the projected Gauss-Seidel algorithm. PGS doesn't have a lot of theoretical guarantees about convergence, but it does pretty well in practice. The collision pipeline's job is to examine all of the active shapes in a scenario, figure out which pairs of shapes are colliding, where they're colliding, and their separation direction, or the direction that they should be pushed apart, their collision normal, same thing. Standard collision pipelines may have three or four phases, a uh, broad phase, mid phase, narrow phase, and a manifold phase. Slingshot's pipeline is divided into broad phase, narrow phase, geometry phase, and manifold phase. So Slingshot, as you can probably see, only supports cuboids, spheres, capsules, and cylinders which means that there are only 10 unique shape pairs that can be colliding at once. Each shape pair has its own pipeline that uses algorithms that are templatized specifically on that shape pair. And some of the shape pairs pass through a pipeline that combines the narrow and geometry phase, and these shape pairs use separating axis tests. And the rest of the shapes go through a pipeline that uses the Gilbert Johnson Kirthy or GJK algorithm for a narrow phase and the expanding polytope algorithm or EPA for the geometry phase. Vanilla implementations of SAT and GJK EPA only give you one contact point pair and a collision normal between two colliding shape pairs. And that's enough to stop the rigid bodies from those shape pairs from penetrating each other but it's not enough to get them to rest stably on top of each other. Contact manifolds stabilize collisions for face-to-face, face-to-edge, and sometimes even edge-to-edge -edge interactions by increasing the number of contact point pairs per collision. Without contact manifolds, this stack of boxes will stand up for a little while, but eventually it'll jitter and break itself apart until everything falls over. But with contact manifolds enabled, the same stack of boxes will stay stacked up for hours on end. Throughout this video, we've looked at quite a few different scenarios, and building all of these was only possible because Slingshot has an editor!
having an editor that serializes scenarios into JSON is exceedingly more productive than generating scenarios by hand. So what we're watching right now is a sped up construction of a Trammel of Archimedes. And it's always a good idea to test out the scenarios before. <laughs> it's always a good idea to test out the scenarios as you build them to make sure you're not missing anything. Um, because in this case, it looks like, <laughs> it looks like I forgot a couple of rotation constraints. And after adding some constraints back in, it looks like everything's pretty good. Except, uh, oh, uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe there's one rotation constraint that's still missing because this should not be able to do that. All right, and after a few false starts, we've got a trammel of Archimedes inside a little playpen so we can knock some rigid bodies around. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Open source versions of Slingshot and T-Rex are available on GitHub, so links are down in the description. And if you happen to check them out, maybe give them a star while you're there. But other than that, it's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for coming and watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a comment, hit that like button and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.